And the opening exercise is John noticed patterns in the arrangement of numbers in the table below. And here is the table. So on the first row, can you notice a pattern in the first row? It's plus one. What about the second row? Well, in the second row, it looks like it's plus six, plus, uh, well, not plus six, it's plus, what is that, 5.8 or something like that? Yeah. Well, if you can't find a pattern, I mean, plus 5.8 in the, between the first two terms approximately, but if you can't find a pattern that's consistent all the way through, can you figure out how those numbers were generated? How did 5.76 come to be? And 11.56 and 19.36, where did they come from? I'll give you a hint, they came from the first row. So what has happened to the first row in order to get to the second row? Oh. So what happened, for instance, in 5.4? To go from 5.4 to 29.16. I'll give you another hint, the same thing has happened all of these first row terms to get to the second row. So there's two hints. You're doing something to the first row and the same thing has happened all the way through. Uh, technically that is true. There is multiplication going on. Multiply it by itself. That is right. Every number in the first row has been squared to generate the second row. Okay, so now, since we have the first row, and then the second row is what is squared of the first row, then we go to the third row. How did the third row come to be? Where did we get the numbers for the third row? to go to get these numbers here. What Before you figure out how they came to be, can you notice something different about the placement of these numbers? Like the actual uh, alignment. What's different about the alignment? They're not in line. So this one is like in between here. So how did this 5.8 come to be? Is that where you have to add each one of those to get the next one from the second line? Ah, uh, you're getting close. I did something to these two. You take 11.56 minus 5.17. That's right. That's what Moore said. You have to subtract them and come up with 5.8. If you subtract these two, you get 7.8. And if you subtract these two, 9.8 and so on. Okay. Now look at the fourth row. How did these twos come to be? That's right. It's the difference between these two above them on either side. So there's a difference of two all the way through there. Now look at this question. Assuming that the pattern would continue, he used it to find the value of 7.4 squared. Explain how he used the pattern to find 7.4 squared and then use the pattern to find 8.4 squared. Okay, so we want 7.4 squared. Let's look over here. How could we do a pattern here to get 7.4 squared? Well, yeah, here's 7.4. And we would have we want to find this right here. 7.4 squared is going to be in this spot, but without using a calculator, just using the table. Can we go in and fill in something like in here? You can add 2 to 11.8. Yeah. 
Well, you're on the right track. It's 13.8. And that difference is 2, right? That's close. How did we get 11.8 from these two numbers here? We had to subtract them. So to find out what number would be over here, Forty point nine six minus thirteen point eight, or would we do yeah. plus? Yeah, you would add. Them. You would add them together. So, what is forty point nine six plus thirteen point eight? Oh, it's fifty four. Okay, so fifty four, fifty four point seven six. All right, so I'll write that a little more clearly up here. 54.76 is how you could generate 7.4 squared just by using that table. Of course, I've misaligned my table, so it would look a little odd. But And then you would do the same pattern to figure out what um, 8.4 squared is. So if I went over this way a little bit further, instead of 13.8, I would have... 15.8, and what would I do with that? Yeah, I would add it to the 54.76. So 50 or 54.76 plus 15.8 would be 70.56. Right. One way that you can check this to see if you are in possession of the right answer is that whenever you square something like this. If I square 8.4, look at the last number. Last number is 4. What's 4 squared? 4 squared is 16. What's the last number in 16? 6. So the last number in the squared answer would have to be 6. Before we leave this table, we want to label each of these rows. Now the first row was 2.4, 3.4, and so on, 4.4. What name could I give to that row, and not row 1, row 2, and things like that? What descriptive name could I give to that first row? Uh, well, not, not describing the, the pattern. Like if I gave you um, if I gave you a bunch of numbers and you didn't know what they were for, you would just call them a four letters with an I. T. S. List. Yes. So there's your list of numbers, and then. What are those numbers in the second row? What are they called? List two. No, no, we're not going to do list two. What are those numbers? What most accurately describes the second row numbers? Eight. Squares, yes. So those are the squares. And then for the uh, third and fourth rows, what happened in order to get the 5.8, the 7.8, and so on? Subtract. What's the answer to a subtraction problem? Difference. So there are the first differences. And we'll just abbreviate. What did we do to get the twos? So there are the second differences. That's it. What is the sequence of the first differences for the linear polynomial given by AX plus B, where A <coughs> and B are constant coefficients? So if I want my first term, I could put a 0 in for X. If I put a 0 in for X, what would I get back? Zero. Oh. B. I would get B because at 0 times A is 0, but I still have a plus B out there. So we'll just make a B. 
All right, so if I put a 1 in for x, what would I come back with? a plus b, all right? a plus b. What if I put a 2 in for x? 2a plus b. What if I put a 3 in for x? 3a plus b. And what's the next one? 4a plus b. Okay. So if I did that, then let's see if we can figure out the next row. And the next row is going to be our first differences. And I didn't leave enough room on here to make a uh, column heading. So here is going to be our list. We'll just make this the list. And then over here we'll make this the first differences. Like that. Uh, need to sneak an eye in there somewhere. First differences. All right. What what would my first difference be? How could I find the first difference? And then we can just write it out. Then we can actually get it off to the right. A plus B minus B. That's right. So I need a, a blue marker here. So we'll do A plus B and minus B. What do I have left? I have A. That is right. How do I get my next? In reality, this could really be on the blue line, but I'm just not putting it there because it would look kind of odd. I probably should have skipped lines through here, but I did not. So we'll just make little arrows. Uh, what? How could I find my next difference? 2a plus b and then minus a plus b. How should I write the minus a plus b? in parentheses, minus a plus b, like that. That does make a difference, because if you don't put the parentheses, it's not going to work out right. Now, off to the right of this, we're still going to put our answer there, but over here it's really 2a plus b, and then that minus sign makes it minus a minus b. So what is 2a minus a? Okay. a, and then what's b minus b? zero so I'm just left with a. a right and if I go over here and do the next differences we'll, put, well let's check it out let's do 3a plus b and then we're going to do minus 2a plus b and over here that would be 3a plus b minus 2a minus b and it is right it comes out to be A. So your first differences all throughout there are going to be A. The next one is find the first, second, and third differences of the polynomial AX squared plus BX plus C by filling in the blanks in the following table. Okay, so it's giving you your list. Keep in mind this is important, and you're going to see why once we fill in this table. Okay, so they've plugged in the, the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 into that AX squared plus BX plus C to generate that list of items for you there. Now we have to find the first differences, and we'll use uh, some scratch paper. We'll just use stuff that's here just paper on our desk. We don't have to do it on the screen. Uh, for the first difference, if we did this minus this, then what would we come up with? A plus B. A plus B. Okay, so let's put A plus B in between these two. Alright, now we have to do this minus this. That, that'll be a little more difficult. 3a plus b is right. Does anybody need to see how we came up with 3a plus b? You're simply writing out this first, but then it's minus this quantity, and you put the parentheses in, and that minus sign changes all of these to minus a minus b minus c, and then you work it out. Okay, what about... 
that difference, what would that be? 5A plus B is right. If at any time you need to see an illustration of how we came up with that, just let me know. We'll go off to the side of the screen and, and work it out. Okay, what about this difference here? 7A plus B. Now, once you do the first three, can't you figure out a pattern to it and then just start writing in the answers? All right. And so what should this one be? 9A plus B. Okay. Well, there are your first differences. But now we have to do the second differences. What's the difference between here, whoops, here and there? What's the difference? It is 2A. What's the difference here? 2A all the way through there. Okay, so it's 2A. All right, now if we go to the third differences, what are those? Zero. All the way through. Okay. Uh, maybe. In some of them. Some of them may go four columns, may, or uh, four differences, or five, depending on what this is up here. Now, that's... Ah, yes. So it's AX squared plus BX plus C, and she's hitting on it. If you do this, if you get a list of data, and you go through and find these differences, and in the second differences you come up with the same item all the way through such as a 2a then that's going to let you know that it's what type of function that created all of this what type of function is that I uh, will go this Quadratic, yes. Quadratic. So this is the purpose of this. If you're given a list of data, you can go down and see if you can figure out what it was that you that generated this list of data just by doing the first differences, second differences, third differences. And if you can't see a pattern, you keep going until pretty much there's no options left and it may not be anything that created it. So in this problem, it's telling you it's starting with AX to the third plus BX squared plus CX plus D. And they've entered in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and came up with that list of values. And not only has it given you this list here, but it's also completed the first differences for you. So now you have to find the second differences. She is right. It is 6A plus 2B. And remember, you're doing this minus this, and it's got to be in parentheses. So it's this minus A minus B minus C, because the minus sign would change the value all the way through. So it is 6A plus 2B. And 12A plus 2B. All right, that's for these two. And what would this be? Not 16A. 18A, yeah. 18A plus 2B. And what about this one? 24A plus 2B. That's right. Now, if you have any questions about how we came up with those second differences, we can do one off to the right if you want to. We would just have a 6A left. Okay, 6A, what about here? Looks like it's going to be 6A all the way through. And what would the fourth differences be? Zero. Yeah, so we have zero. So if there's four terms, will there be four differences? Uh, if there are four terms and it works out evenly, 
then you, sh you should be able to go to the fourth column and get zeros. And, but since we have the same thing other than zeros in the third column, then that's letting us know that this came from what type of function, which is this. Cubic, yes. Cubic because the highest power in there is 3. So you have a function, there's x and y, and your first differences are already given to you. So there's a function out there that, is, that has been uh, generating the x and y table there on the left. And all we know is what the first differences are. So we want to figure out what type of relationship it is. So what is the uh, second difference there for 5 and negative 1? 5 minus a negative 1? 6. What about the next one? 12. That's right. What about the third differences? 6 all the way through. So we know we have the same one in the third column. So what type of uh, function was it that created this? Cubic. It was cubic, right. Uh, we, we will stop here and then we're going to pick up next Wednesday because you have your post test for the uh, SLOs uh, that are, have to be done on Monday and Tuesday. So we'll pick this up on Wednesday where we left off right here.